Hello, I'm Ken Gould from the Virtualization Solutions engineering team within EMC's Global Solution Centers. Today I would like to take you through the process of installing a virtual recover point cluster using VMware vSphere. First of all, let's mention a few prerequisites. Installing recover point in a virtual machine relies on technology called VM Direct Path. This is a function within vSphere 4.0 that allows a virtual machine to directly access a PCI device, completely bypassing the hypervisor layer. This allows us to present QLogic HBAs to the virtual machine, as is required by any recover point appliance. Nehalem class processors are a requirement for VM Direct Path. Even if your physical server meets this requirement, you may still need to enable the setting in the server BIOS. Here we see the process of enabling this on a Dell server. The exact name of the setting varies from vendor to vendor, so please make sure to check your system documentation to find the correct setting. Once complete, the PCI devices should now be available for configuration as VM Direct Path devices from the Configuration, Hardware, Advanced Settings section of the vSphere host. Note that each time you make a change to these configured devices on a server, a reboot will be required, so make sure to evacuate the host using vMotion to avoid virtual machine downtime. So let's create our first virtual RPA. Here we have deployed four instances of a template we created earlier. The template has been assigned 4 GB of RAM, 2 NICs, 4 virtual CPUs and a 70 GB virtual disk to store the RPA's operating system. The template was deliberately created without any QLogic PCI devices assigned to it. So the first step for each VRPA is to dedicate two QLogic devices to it. Note that VM Direct Path currently supports assigning a maximum of two such devices to each virtual machine. Once assigned, power on the virtual machine and then we can begin the initial install of RecoverPoint. Once the VM has booted and we have logged on as Box MGMT, the first step we need to carry out is the assignment of a temporary IP address. It is good practice to configure this IP address to be the same as the intended long-term address so as to make subsequent configuration using the recover point deployment tool much easier. Next, using the diagnostics menu and the fiber channel diagnostics in particular, we can detect whether or not this virtual machine is seeing anything on the SAN network. It also allows us to see the worldwide names generated by the recover point appliance and which should now be logging into our FC switch. To ensure they are logging in, we can detect fiber channel targets or detect fiber channel LUNs in order to force the virtual RPA to log into the switch. In this instance, we are using Brocade hardware, so we can go to View and refresh from Live Fabric and then notice that our worldwide name count increases from 48 to 50, meaning our virtual RPA has successfully logged in. Now, in addition to all our Emulex and Clarion devices, we can see two new entries under Kasha, and these worldwide names correspond directly to those we saw in the virtual RPA console a moment ago. If we expand these devices, we can see those worldwide names. And the first thing we are going to do to make our lives a little simpler is to create an alias for these devices, so that when we do our zoning, we can just pick that alias from a list. In this case, we only need to create a single alias and add both worldwide names to that alias, as we will always zone these two devices as a single entity. Next we need to create some zones using that newly created alias. In this case we have a CX4480 array. It's actually an NS480, but in this case we are using the fiber channel interfaces to connect to our RPAs. So we are going to zone that alias to both the A and B storage processors and to the A2 and B2 ports respectively. Once we've created a meaningful zone name, so site A VRPA1 to CX480A2, we scroll through our list and find the two aliases we want to add to that zone. So this zone is going to connect both of the RPA ports to SPA of the Clarion. Now we need to repeat in order to create a link to the SPB processor of that Clarion. Once again, we add in our two relevant aliases to our new zone. And now that we have two zones created, 
we can go to our zoning configuration and add those two new zones to our active zone set. Once we have added them both in, in the case of the brocade switch, we need to first save the config and then enable the config. Of course, this part of the process may differ slightly from one switch vendor to another. Now that we have zoned them successfully, we can go back to our virtual RPA and again try to scan for fiber channel targets, this time successfully. Looking at the Clarion and updating its status, we can now see four new entries corresponding to the four paths we have created between the two RPA QLogic devices and the two Clarion SP ports. Our next step is to manually register a host using the first set of paths seen here, selecting Recover Point Appliance as the initiator type and failover mode of 4. Now, if we refresh our connectivity status, we have a new manual host entry for our virtual RPA, made up of two paths. However, that's only half of the paths from the RPA. Next, we need to add the other set of two paths to the same manual host entry, again making sure to select an initiator type of recover point appliance and a failover mode of 4. Now, if we refresh our connectivity status again, we can see a single manual host entry that shows all four paths as being registered and logged in. The final step from the array side is to assign our virtual RPA to a storage group in order to give it access to the relevant LUNs. These being the repository, the journal LUNs and of course the production LUNs that we need to replicate along with their local CDP copies. Now that we have successfully assigned storage to our first virtual RPA we can return to the RPA console and attempt to detect the LUNs that we've just assigned. Here we can see 30 volumes. We can also run the SAN Diagnostics tool, which now completes without errors or warnings. And that's all we need to do for each virtual RPA in the environment.